Hello, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to our Valentine's Day virtual cooking class. I am Charlotte, and joining me is my moderator, my friend, my colleague, my coworker, all the things. You are all the things to me, Scott Tompkins. Oh, uh, am Scott I? Scott Tompkins, yes. Hey, everybody. Uh, those of you joining us on Facebook, don't forget uh, when you see Charlotte click on something or grab something. She's not going to click on anything. She's going to grab things. You're going to click on it. You click on the things. And then you'll be able to pay, or go to a place where you can pay for it, take it home, uh, cook along with us. Um, and those of you watching on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Those of you that are here on the Zoom, welcome. Those of you all over the world tuning in, we're excited to have you. It's all about Valentine's Day, Charlotte. It is. Take it away. All about Valentine's Day. So um, all the recipes that we are creating today have one <coughs> fabulous thing in common, and that's chocolate. All right, so we are going to make a four-course four meal all with chocolate. So the recipes we're making today are cocoa-dusted, bacon-wrapped figs, um, literally charcuterie board in a bite. I love them. We are making a chocolate balsamic vinaigrette that is so wonderful and it coats the lettuce beautifully. We're going to make a cocoa dusted tenderloin with a chocolate demi. And then to finish it all off, a lava cake. I did, Tom Kids, catch some flack on my menu. Um, some oh, of yeah? the chefs around here were like, hey, the 90s <clears throat> called and they want their lava cake back. But the 90s are having a moment right now. My menu is having a moment right now. You know right what now. I think? I think maybe they're just jealous because it takes a lot of of talent and courage to pull off a lava cake. This is what I think. Essentially, we're making a, we're <clears> undercooking <throat> a brownie. It's going to be amazing. So I think we should get started. If you have any questions about what you see here, um, you can write them in the chat or um, on whatever platform you're on, and Scott will ask the question out loud or he'll answer it. Um, and if you guys have any ideas and <clears> all <throat> the things, I want to hear it. Also, Tompkins, I want to know what is your what is your Valentine's Day tradition? What's my Valentine's Day yes. tradition? Uh, usually cooking at home. Uh, I worked so many years in restaurants doing the yes. Valentine's Day thing. I don't really, we don't really go out for Valentine's. We always go in. I feel like it's much more personal. There's nothing wrong with making reservations and going out, but there's something more personal when you're uh, a little more attentive to kind of making the dinner from scratch. It takes a little work. It takes a little planning. It takes a little more of that kind of skill. So it's, it's really nice to show the one that you care about, your significant other, your partner. Uh, a little something special. Oh, also, we need to tell people, if you're just joining, if you've never watched a virtual class, or HB virtual classes, some a few things. There is no teleprompter. Nope. This is all live. Whatever you see is exactly what you're going to get. Charlotte messes up. We burn things all the time. It happens. This is the human aspect of cooking, folks, and we're taking I mean, you along. Stay tuned. With you the never entire, know that's right. what I'm going to break. No commercial <laughs> breaks. Straight through. Here we go. All right. So, cocoa-dusted figs. Um, these may sound familiar to you. So the bacon wrap fig, it's sort of a take on the bacon wrap date, which I believe are called devils on. Devils on horseback. Right? But um, I chose figs, dried figs, and we're using the HEB um, dried mission figs because um, figs sort of have a little bit of like symbolism as far as a food of love. Um, of, really? Of plenty fertility. Yep. So I thought maybe it would be fitting, you know, foods that... Every Get time I moves. come to yeah, this class, yeah. hey, I okay. learn something. Valentine's Day. So we're using some figs. Um, I'm going to uh, stuff these figs with a Manchego cheese. Um, I've got some right here. It usually comes in these nice wedges. And Put a rind on there. It's, there's no, like, you know, I kind of cut it. It's no wrong or right way to get a cube of cheese, but typically... What I do is just remove the rind. Um, Chef, I named this dish because yeah. if the devil's on horseback is with the uh, dates, then we're going to call these pigs on figs. Pigs on figs. That'll be okay. our. So welcome to the Cooking with Dr. Code, Seuss hour. Code name. Um, so glad you guys made it. Okay, so I am using a six-month Manchego. You can use, there's, you know, six-month, three-month, whatever, nine-month. Um, you can use whatever you like. If you're not into Manchego, you can't find Manchego. Uh, like a sharp cheddar works, or um, really like any cheese that, any cheese that does it for you. All right, so I'm just gonna cut these guys into some planks like so. It's really um, very simple. Cut them like that, and we really want to get. You just want some cubes, and you want them to be small enough to uh, fit inside the fig, but also you know big enough to where. Bite size, you know, just bite size. Listen, style I'm here pieces. for the cheese. Like the fig is great, the bacon is great, but I'm just here for like the ooey gooey cheese. So you, you want enough both. cheese, right? So we're just gonna go like so, right? And I've got some right here that I've done. Um, we're gonna use the center cut bacon. There's lots of different types of center cut bacon. Um, we've got some um, 
you know, really thick, like thick, peppered, hickory smoked, you know, um, center cut bacon. But I'm really just a fan of this guy right here. It has the perfect, like, thickness for wrapping anything. Um, sometimes when you get like a bacon wrapped shrimp or, you know, bacon wrapped like shrimp or, you know, bacon wrapped like a popper, there's too much bacon and it doesn't crisp and it doesn't get like, That's right. you know, I want that crisp, right? So, well, that's um, why center cut bacon is a little bit shorter. It's yes, a little bit easier to use. Yes. And if you're a big uh, do your bacon in the microwave kind yeah. of person, then it's really, really it great for plate. doing it in the microwave because it fits right. on the plate a little better. Okay. Um, so mission figs, I've got some right here. They tend to dry out. Um, obviously, they're dried. And to make them a little bit more workable or pliable, uh, I soak them in water for 30 seconds. Just enough, get them wet, t dump them out onto a paper towel, dry them off, put them in your container. And that's going to give them a little bit of moisture um, and make them a little, like I said, more pliable. So really quickly, let me show you what I do. So um, just with your knife, you're just going to cut this guy, you know, just a little bit. You just want to give them a hinge, just enough to like open it up like a book. So you can because stuff them. So you can put the cheese in it. Uh, so I'm just going to grab my cheese. I have to make a confession, Charlotte. Yes. Uh, when I was a kid, we had a fig tree, and my mother used to make, uh, God bless her, the worst fig jam that she would put in my peanut butter and fig jam sandwiches. And I think it pretty much ruined me on figs like for fig a Newtons? long time. No, no I Newtons? like the strawberry ones. I never did the figs. I could never do it. It ruined me on it. But when you, you wrap it in bacon. It's yeah. got manchego. Those of us that are not big Telling fig you. fans or had a bad fig, fig experience like I did, we're going to put those things aside, and we're going to try these because they're, uh, they've got a lot of delicious things happening with did them. Did you know that the filling of a Fig Newton, like 30% of the filling of a Fig Newton, is broken cookies that they rework into that filling? Isn't that genius? So are you telling me that the Fig Newtons that fell on the ground, they just sweep them up, chop them up, and throw them back the in the ground. That's what so, it sounds like to uh, me. You know what? Let's move on. Just ruin uh, my whole <laughs> Fig Newton. All right. So here we go. I've got, I'm just going to show you a couple really quickly right here. So I've got them um, on, on my sheet tray. Um, this is how I do any bacon wrapped anything, right? Um, I lay out my bacon on my sheet tray. Um, I recommend lining it with parchment paper or foil or Silpat um, because, you know, we're going to put some sugar on this and that'll ruin a sheet pan faster than nothing. So uh, I lay it all out and then I just roll like so, right? And it's a lot easier if um, everything is at room temperature or not as cold. And then just roll them up and then put them seam side down, all right? Seam side down, important, seam right? Seam side down. Now Break you can um, stick them with a, a toothpick now or you can do it afterwards. I'm going to go ahead and skewer these guys now because it makes it really easy to um, move them. Look at this, see? So you just cut that center cut bacon straight in half, and it's like the perfect size. Just the right amount. Size. Charlotte, eight is good for me. Yes. What are you going to eat for, the, for our Valentine's Day uh, feast here? I'll, um, I'll share, but I feel like I'm going gonna, gonna to go. Well, this recipe, I think, makes 16, So, um, but I'm only doing eight now. These are also great. You can also freeze these guys, like make a whole bunch of them and freeze them and pull them out for like Friday night appetizers or if you're Special having Special like, occasions, yeah. Yeah, if you're having a little wine dinner, whatever, right? I'm into that. Okay. Charlotte, you got big, uh, big, big, I almost said 4th of July plans, but we got, you got time to plan that one. Valentine's Day. <laughs> um, you know what? I'm terrible. I, don't, I didn't plan a single thing. Okay, look at these guys. I didn't plan a single thing. Um, maybe I will get Surprised. some. Surprised? Yes. I'm sure, I'm sure, Hunter, I'm sure my person will come up with something, but there's no expectation. Or is there? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. what that means. So <laughs> there's a huge expectation. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to make the cocoa dust or our glaze. And so we're using a little bit of maple syrup. Um, I love maple syrup and bacon. I feel like it is a match made in heaven. Um, I mean, I could just dip my bacon in maple syrup, kind of like chips and queso or like chips and salsa, just carrots and ranch. Um, it all works gonna, together, right? Right. We're going to add a little bit of um, unsweetened cocoa, and I'm using about about a you know a teaspoon. You don't need too much. Um, originally, when I was testing this recipe and trying to figure it out, I was like, I'll just roll them in cocoa, and it'll stick to the bacon. And it was like, whew. A little bitter, huh? It was a little cocoa. A little bit bitter. It was <laughs> a little too much. much. I was like, powder. we need to grease these wheels. So a little bit of brown sugar and maple syrup really help, and it's almost like millionaire bacon. It's pretty good. Um, so I'm just going to add a little bit in here. 
um, the the brown sugar like it crisps and caramelizes and does this really great thing. And so got that molasses. Yeah, in there. we got the fig from like you know for the charcuterie board that salty bacon porkness thing going on. We got the cheese, the manchego. I mean, it's like. I think people need to know, you know, like you got cocoa powder in a lot of things tonight, and cocoa powder yeah. is really, you know, cocoa powder and dark chocolate. You know, it's bitter, so yeah. it can be used not just in sweets, like making a cake yeah. or whatever, but it's also really good in savory dishes it is. as well. It is. All right, so I'm just going to use a brush. You could dip these guys or you can brush them. You don't That's a really nice brush. Where'd you, uh, where'd you oh, get that brush from? Oh, glad you asked. I got this brush at, at H-E-B. Actually, I got it from Scott Tompkins. It's ergonomic, and I think you got it at... I don't ever leave home without a pastry brush in my pocket, Charlotte. You never know when something's going to happen when and I'll need a brush. When something needs to be basted. You, I mean, you could be walking by anybody's house and they're like, God, if only I had a brush. And I'm like, you know what? That's why I carry this around. Okay. So we're just going to put a little bit on here, just a light. Um, that must get uncomfortable in your, in your pants having the, like. No, I know. keep uh, cheese graters. Oh, I keep a whole all, slew. All I got a whole, okay. I travel with a whole toolkit. Um, we're just going to just, just a little bit, right? You don't need to put too much. Sometimes the sugar burns. It's just enough to like, you know, it's just a hint, right? It's dusted, if you will. I'm going to put this over here. We're going to throw these guys straight into the oven. I've got a preheated oven, 400 degrees. You need a timer um, there, chef? Yeah. Give me about eight minutes. Can I have eight, eight minutes? Eight minutes. You can All have right, whatever you want. We're going to throw want. these guys right there, eight minutes. And while that's happening, quick cleanup. Let me wash my hands. Over here. Um, for those of you that are just joining us, look at that picture, okay. the teddy bear, those flowers. Oh. Uh, for, we have Valentine's Day is uh, right around the corner. Uh, don't forget to get everything you need. You can visit an HB uh, near you. Uh, also, if you're just joining us, we are doing everything chocolate as our Valentine's Day class. Yes. Chef Charlotte leading us in the four-course chocolate Mom. extravaganza. Extravaganza. I'm telling you, I love chocolate. Did you ever see that movie, Chocolat? I did. It's like been a while, but that? I really did. I really did appreciate. We're like the she has that dinner chocolate. party, and they're pouring all that chocolate, and it's an <laughs> oh, I love it. It's I like that is such a great food scene. Okay, we're gonna move to our um, chocolate balsamic vinaigrette. We're not gonna dress our salad just yet because we don't want our greens to wilt. But I'm definitely gonna get that started. Um, while that happens, I'm gonna come over to my stove and heat up our cast iron skillet. So now, why are you going to do that, Chef? Because I'm going to sear our steaks in the cast iron. I added a little bit of oil to this earlier, and I'm just going to put this on low. All right? doesn't need to be too high. I don't want to burn anything. So just low. Um, all right. Vinaigrette time. All right, guys. So traditional vinaigrette. A vinaigrette? Have you ever had a vinaigrette? Vinaigrette. Is, is it like the same a thing as a vinaigrette? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do just a very traditional um, vinaigrette, right? So the, we're gonna do the three to one um, oil to vinegar, and I'm gonna use a grapeseed oil for this recipe. I want the balsamic and the chocolate to steal the show, and olive oil tends to, you know. It can, it can robust, be a little strongly right? flavored depending on and, which one you get. Yep, and the, um, the grapeseed oil has a, like a very neutral flavor, so I really like it for this. Um, so, it won't overpower all your fantastic right? ingredients. So chocolate and balsamic are a beautiful combination. They go really well together. Um, it's sort of this, when we talk about pairing foods or like um, balancing foods, like kind of goes with like, right? So um, there's this beautiful bitterness, but like depth um, and uh, from the balsamic, but also from like dark chocolate. Oh, I love it, right? I love it. It's the same reason why like dark chocolate and um, red wine go together. So I've got a couple of tablespoons of um, balsamic. I'm using a four leaf balsamic, so a, um, a higher end balsamic. A little sweeter. A little bit sweeter, right? Um, but any balsamic will do, right? Any balsamic will do. I'm also gonna add in a little bit of pomegranate juice. Um, the, um, this is gonna add a little subtle sweetness, a, kind of like a fruity note that's actually going to um, kind of pair well with the chocolate and balsamic notes. If you don't have pomegranate juice or you can't find it, you can use like cranberry juice or even um, a little bit of uh, maple syrup or honey will work. But this is gonna give us a subtle sweetness without adding a lot of um, viscosity to our um, vinaigrette because the chocolate is gonna make it a little bit heavy, all right? Um, I'm also gonna add in a shallot. The recipe doesn't call for a shallot, but we had so many over there. And I also know how much Scott likes shallots, so I'm gonna throw I'm in. I'm a garlic and shallot guy. Yeah, you are. And then I'm Aerobatics. gonna do two cloves of garlic because I know how much um, 
Uh, Me? My name? Scott? Scott. He likes <laughs> it's okay. We're all friends, folks. <laughs> I'm just taken aback by your charm and good oh, looks. Oh, okay. nice, Jeff. Right? Uh, Too so now, sweet. Now I'm going to add in. Again, we're going back to um, that unsweet, unsweetened cocoa powder, which is going to give us a little bit more depth uh, and really enhance this. Give it some body. Yes. All right. So I'm going to throw that in there. Now... Normally, if you are a return guest, you will notice that we use the, the overhead blender cam. Uh, I'm not doing that because I'm terrified that I'm going to get balsamic vinegar everywhere. So I'm going to put my lid on. Oh, wait, I forgot. We're going to use Dijon. We need this for our emulsifier. About a tablespoon. Throw that guy in there. All right? I'm going to turn this on to low. Get it going. You don't want to keep the top off, huh? You don't like taking those kind of risks? Like, uh, I, you know, Rob and I, Rob who does uh, behind the scenes, you won't see I, him. I, I he do does it. all of our camera work. He does everything. We like to do the blender top off right underneath the camera because it just, you know, it kind of increases the danger when you're, when you're cooking. I can't hear you. That's okay. I'm telling I'm oh, saying all good, I'm saying yeah, all good you're things. dangerous. All right. I'm okay, Maverick. All, all right. So now I'm, I've, I'm on like medium speed and I'm slowly adding in. Our grapeseed oil. Yeah, and folks, you don't need a Vitamix blender to make this dressing. You Honestly, don't. I typically use a little $12 Oster blender at home myself. Uh, it's nice to have one of these, but you, it's not necessary to make a fantastic vinaigrette. And you'll start to see our vinaigrette uh, thicken. So as we get an emulsion, it'll start to thicken. And you can see it through there. And then, all right. Let's see. Are we looking good? We getting there? The what? We getting there? Yeah. How's it look, chef? There it, it goes. It looks good. All right, look at that. You can hear it. Can you hear the sounds? It sounds smoother, right? All right, now I'm going to add in our chocolate. The recipe calls for 85% chocolate. Uh, we were out because that's the way the world is right now. So I'm using a 70%. It works just as great. If you want something sweeter, use 54, right? But um, this right here is the 70. So pretty bitter though, right? Shaved. Pretty pretty bitter like. I it's... like that. I love the bitter. Now, shaving your chocolate, you could do it a couple of ways. You could microplane this bad boy like this, or you could use my favorite, which is Peel this it. guy. Or you could just chop it to smithereens. But I kind of like the, I like this. I'm, I'm into this, right? So we're gonna add a little bit of chocolate in here. Just a touch. See how we've lightened in color? We've, we've aerated it, we're emulsified, we've added in like air molecules. I like it. Now Charlotte, for those of us that aren't big dark chocolate fans, if I like say, I don't know, a Twix bar or a Kit Kat, could I, could I do that oh, cup yeah. for cup? Anything goes, whatever yeah, you're into. All right. So you can see there's some chocolate particulate in there, and that's totally okay. So as the blender moves and continues, the, the blades of the blender move, the shear right adds friction, which is going to add heat, and it's ultimately going to melt all of that beautiful chocolate in there. I'm going to add in some salt and pepper. The salt is going to um, balance out the bitterness and also um, enhance some of the sweetness. Salt is life, Charlotte. Salt is life. And then we'll life. do some pepper because, yes. All right. I'm feeling good about this. Are y'all feeling good about Sounds this? Sounds thick. I'm going to add a little bit more oil. Whoa. Walking on the edge. Perfect. Look at that. It's absolutely perfect. Look at this. Oh, so great. All right, I'm going to set this aside. I'm not going to I'm not going to do anything with it quite yet. I'm going to do a quick cleanup and we're going to dress our greens right before we're ready to serve. All right? Chef, you have 10 seconds on your Oh my guys. Pigs on figs. Okay. Okay. Let's see. How do they look? Ooh! All right. It's such a quick appetizer, it too. It is, and you can make them ahead Valentine's. of time. I love it. Okay, stand by. Everyone stand by. Okay. Can we see? Can y'all see? Oh, my God, they smell so good. And we haven't lost all of our – my hands stopped working. All of our cheese. 
Look at these little guys, like little soldiers. I love it. All right, I'm going to grab a plate. I'll put these here so you guys can look at that. Look how good they look. All right, little plates. They're looking good. Oh, y'all, you know what I did? Did I, did I melt the, okay, I didn't. All right, I'm just going to take these guys. Boop. We had a question, Charlotte. Okay, I have an answer. From one of our viewers. Okay, viewer. Uh, it was to both of us. It says, where did you and Char learn to cook? Or when, sorry, when did you and Char learn to cook? Oh, my gosh, when that's did such you a learn great question. Cook? You go first. Oh. And go. Um, huh, huh. I'm going to go down my resume. Um, <laughs> I learned to cook when I was, like, little, like a kid. I did a lot of gross things, but my mom taught me how to cook a lot of stuff. See, that makes me sad. See, I came from a family of no cooks, and so, you know, to me, I learned to cook out of necessity. I it was kind of funny. I love that story, too. What's wrong with that? <laughs> we, I didn't have, like, the grandma that made, like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I've always wanted to have the grandma, like, make the biscuits and do all that kind of, like, oh, no, great I didn't old have, recipes. Like, my mom and I didn't make, like, yeah, I didn't have three-tiered wedding cakes, but, like, I watched her, and I Yeah, I, I, we it. just, I, I learned, yeah. to, I just, I learned out in uh, L.A. a long time ago. 15, yeah? 16 years, I think, I've been cooking professionally on my resume Same. and then before then it was like playing around and doing stuff and yeah. realizing like all right i gotta get cooking is fun look everybody everybody can benefit from learning you know a few tricks and tri tricks and tips yes Say that two times fast H tips and tricks there um, you go. it's a practice it's like yoga or a sport right like you, the more you learn um how to you know the fundamentals of cooking the better you get at it right and then you know flavor profiles and Recipes like, are just guidelines. It's like the road, you know, the yellow line and the white line. You just got to stay in between. We, okay. uh, I love that question. We hope you tune in for more classes. We have so much more content. And if you've missed anything, you can always go back to our YouTube channel, youtube.com. We've done a year of these classes. Everything you can imagine from biscuits to you kids baking. What was your other favorite class? We did a, the Italian the pot, homemade pasta, house. gingerbread houses. That was a cool one. I loved the, um, when you did the cocktail inspired, all sorts. I, my favorite, I liked the pasta class. Classic glass was cool. Okay, I got my gloves. In front of me, I have um, some, these are about seven, eight ounce um, prime beef um, fillets. I'm choosing to use prime beef fillets because it, you know what? I'm cooking it and I'm gonna eat it, so this is what I want. Um, this recipe, however, the sauce in this recipe can go on pork tenderloin. It could go on um, choice tenderloin. In fact, choice tenderloin is a really great, um, if you ask me, like, a great buy. Um, t it's going to be just as tender. It won't have nearly as much um, marbling in it, but it is still a wonderful thing. Um, you could even do it with, um, like, you know, a ribeye or whatever, right? So I'm are you ready for this? This, this is yeah. a great. This is a great question, okay. Morgan. I'm going to say this out loud. She's asking, could you describe to me sort of what a fig tastes and feels like, please? I've never tasted them. I want to tell you that I am the wrong guy to ask because I am not a fan of figs. It's like a seedy, imagine like a lot of little seeds in like a prune mixed with like a, what else is it? Like, it's like, it is, so it's like seedy. the fig like board <laughs> is not going to hire Scott Tompkins to. Um, oh, and they, nor should they. Uh, no, it's like a seedy, to me, if you're asking me, it's like a, it's like a, Prune mixed with like seedy, but like more a slightly chewy. seedy. It has a raisin type, you know. Eh, that but raisins dried, are actually like I like super raisins. sweet. Okay, <laughs> that is a great question. <laughs> Fi they're good. Figs are good. Um, they they do. They have like an earthy, like raisiny note to them, which is fine. Exactly, Morgan. Ugh. Yeah. Exactly. See, you're with me. You're what? in my camp. It's okay to not okay. like figs. It's but okay. It's, but I'll tell you, Morgan, we've dressed it up because it's got manchego stuffed inside Seriously, the cavity. Seriously, and then we covered it in wrapped in pork, bacon. So you're, right? you're covered. And our differences is what makes the world go round. Okay, so you're probably <laughs> wondering what I'm putting on um, this beef, right? And what you I'm tell. putting on this beef is a blend of cocoa powder, right? Unsweetened cocoa powder, uh, black pepper, and um, some salt, right? And so it's hard to see the salt and the pepper because it's been coated with the... Um, Cocoa powder? The cocoa powder, but this like, oh, it's so great. The cocoa powder like adds this bitterness to it that really complements so, like there's like that good fat in there and the beefiness. It all just like balances and plays well together. And it also mimics that char, right? That like acrid grilled char flavor that you get, which is really, really nice. Oh my, my cast iron is totally. I like, so you, we talk about cocoa powder and like yes. espresso powder. So a lot of times you'll see chefs using espresso yeah. powder in like a chocolate dish to yes. kind of really amp up 
and fuel that chocolate flavor. Yep. It's the same thing with like cocoa powder and like a beef or something like that. Or like you talk about espresso powder and beef, but really kind of like it's you're not adding sweetness to it as much as you may think of. It's more you're adding like you're kind of amping up that that beefy kind of flavor. It's a nice compliment, sure. some of that bitterness. All right, I'm going to throw these guys. So um, just so you guys know, I've let my steaks come to room temp. Um, the reason for this is I'm searing these steaks. And I want to have a nice seared, charred outside of the steak. And I want to make sure that I have a nice warm center. So there's nothing like worse in my opinion, and this is personal preference, to cut into a beautiful steak. The outside is nice, warm has that nice sear, that crispness, and the inside is cold. It's just not... And not good cold. Like not good cold, right? <laughs> bad cold. So I'm going to let that go right there for a few minutes. Some other... So for our sauce, what we're going to do is we're going to add in some rosemary and maybe some garlic here in a minute. We're going to finish our sauce with... Um, we're going to add in the more than gourmet um, demi. I love this stuff. It is like my favorite kitchen hack. Making demi, uh, demi gloss from scratch takes days and lots of pots and... No, ain't nobody got time for that, Simplify, right? Simplify, exactly. But this guy, it's on the soup aisle, um, and I keep him in my fridge. I throw him in, like, if I'm making, like, beef bourguignon or pot roast or anything like that. It's just a really quick cheat, but it also makes a really beautiful sauce. So I'm going to show you guys how we do that. Typically, uh, the demi-gloss like, th that she's talking about can be found in the soup aisle. Most HEBs, it's yeah. up top where all the other concerts are. If you don't have an HEB near you, oh, no, it's okay. We totally get it. Uh, you know, in Kentucky, we don't have any HEBs, but... You can always find those on your soup aisle next to all the soup concentrates and do your best. Then you just got to tell yourself, look, it's just it's time to move to Texas, right? Time to it's move where there's an HEB. It's time to move to Texas. Now, if you, can't, um, if you really can't find that product or if you can't find anything like it, you can definitely use, like, a beef broth, and you're just going to reduce, right? But, okay, we got to go to um, get our – we got to get our, our lava cakes going, bro. All right. Lava cakes. This is so easy. Okay, this recipe makes four. Um, so if it's just if it's just two, you, two people, bake two first. If you mess them up, who cares? You got two more. If you are making four, don't worry. If you undercook it, put a scoop of ice cream on top. You got a fudgy like a gooey fudgy sundae. If you wait, if you undercook it, you've got a gooey fudgy sundae. If you overcook it. Put ice cream on top, and you got a gooey, fudgy sundae. Nobody will ever know, okay? But this recipe is really easy, and I'm going to show you. You can make it no problem, all right? So first things first, I'm going to put my butter, four ounces, one stick, in a bowl. We had a great question. Uh, Let's hear it. I'm going to read it out loud because we answered in the chat. But uh, Cheryl's asking for advice for her son who joined the Navy to cook. And my advice to her would be to, uh, after 16 years of being a professional cook, I can say that, Failing is your best friend. Fail yes. often, fail, fail over and over again because in food, you're going to have to fail just like everything because the more you fail, the more you learn what to do and how to do it better. And so my advice, Cheryl, is tell him not to be afraid to fail. And if he fails or something burns, don't worry about it. The best chefs in the world yeah. have failed their way to the it's top. That's food. how it is. You learn. It'll be exactly. okay. It'll be okay. All right. So um, in my, a larger bowl, um, my borosilicate bowl, and if you like this bowl, Click you right can click on the link. Borosilicate. It's a kind. It's the kind of bowl, Charlotte, that is good. It's tempered glass. Yes, it is tempered. It's it from can, France. It's from France. It could go from hot to cold, hot to cold, without shattering. Okay, so five eggs. It's two whole eggs and three yolks. Don't discard those other egg whites. You can put them in your scrambled eggs in the morning. That was your microwave chef. Oh, my microwave. I was like, what is that? I was like, what? Up, what time's fire? up, everybody. Did, did you all see the terror in my face? Okay, my microwave, my butter. Okay. How's your butter? It's hot. Oh, let me just, let me just catch myself here for a second. Thank God. Okay. Chocolate. Right here, I have got 55% 55 baking bar. Okay. I'm going to take this, throw this right into... Kind of temper, let it melt down. And we are going to let the heat from the butter melt this chocolate. We may have to take it back into the microwave, and we'll do that 10 seconds at a time. No big deal. This is what, okay. if you're just joining us for these classes, we are right in the middle of a uh, Valentine's feast, four yes. courses. Uh, you can check out the YouTube link. You can check out the, uh, the chat for the recipes. They're all there. Uh, what's great about this class is, Charlotte, they're seeing it live, yeah. is that everything is live. There's yeah. no commercials. There's no outtakes. There's no whatever. Nothing. We're just rolling. Nothing. So when we make mistakes, hey, it's all good. We catch it. We show you how to fix them. Yeah. Um, all right. Powdered sugar, uh, 
cup and a quarter. I like powdered sugar for this recipe. It's lighter. Um, it just emulsifies or dissolves faster, and it makes sort of a lighter guy, which is great because we're only using eggs for our leavener, which is great for this. So cup and a quarter straight into here. Don't worry if it clumps up. You're it's not trying not, to dissolve all those sugar granules, right? Nope. So it's a little bit easier. Nope. We just want to incorporate everything. And then also, um, just a note, you want to make sure that your eggs are room temperature, right? Everything should be room temperature because we're going to put melted chocolate um, and butter into this. If your eggs were cold, it seizes up and you don't get this really beautiful batter, right? See, yeah, it clumped up. No up. big That'd deal. It's no, no problem. We're going to add a little vanilla. A little extract. A lot of vanilla. Oh, I love it. I'm a big fan of vanilla too. I'm usually a double, whatever the recipe really? said. Whatever your favorite recipe is, accept this challenge right now and double the vanilla in the recipe, and I promise you, you'll be like, it's so much better. Tompkins uses that theory with garlic as well. It's like, I do oh, use that theory with garlic. One is so good, it's also good for seven you. must be better. <laughs> All right, mix this up. Let me see how this chocolate's doing. All right, I have a feeling that we are going to have to stick this back into the microwave. Don't fear. Um, 10 seconds at a time, guys. Uh, if you scorch chocolate, it seizes up, gets funky. So let's do 10 seconds at a time. In the meantime, let's get our flour in here. This recipe is essentially a, a flourless chocolate cake with the exception of this third of a cup. Tiny um, little bit of flour just to kind of stabilize and give us Just to stabilize structure. and give us that structure. You use an all-purpose uh, flour there, Chef? I am using all-purpose. That's a medium protein flour, anywhere from 11 to uh, probably 10 to 11 percent. There lower. you go. All right, mix that up. I'm going to come over here and check my steaks. Check out my steak. I want it medium, chef. I know, I know. Okay. I'll eat carpaccio, I'll eat tartare. I like it raw, but for steaks, when I have it hot, I want the middle to be warm. Is that just yeah. me? Am I weird? No. I mean, I am weird, but I mean, I accept that about myself. You get to eat your steak however you like to eat your steak. I'm not going to judge you. There's no wrong way. A little bit? A little if bit of If you want to put ketchup on it, you go. I will not do that. I won't do, I won't do ketchup. No. I'm okay with it. How much, chocolate, how much think... chocolate do you use in the lava cake, Chef? This is six ounces. So six ounces. one of our baked bars is uh, four ounces, so you're going to use uh, one and a half. I thought to myself before I did this, should I chop it up more? And I was like, nah, it'll be great. It'll be good TV. And now I'm like, we're going to go back into for 15 more seconds. Uh, I'm going to come over here and we're going to flip our steaks. Flip them. It, it smells really, really good. And I wish uh, we had a live studio audience that could smell just how good all that is. This is the reason why you need to cook your steaks in a cast iron pan, period. You get Do you the see best, that? You get the best contact for that Maillard reaction. Would Look at we that. call this a California tan? That's a, like, it's California tan, but you kind of fell asleep on the beach a little bit longer than you planned a little bit, and I'm okay with that. I think that's good. Right. You got to burn. You got to burn the base lines. tan, right? Look at that. Maillard reaction. That looks beautiful. We're going to let that go. I actually turned my heat off. We're going to go for another three to four minutes on that side. All right. I think we did it. I think we got it, guys. Okay. Look at this. Like at this point, I'm done. I'll be I'll be in the other room with this. I don't know. What yeah, I mean, you matter. could bypass this and just use it as like just, this is just yeah chocolate fondue yes. at this point, butter and chocolate. Yes. Okay. This is perfect. Let me get all this out of the way, and we'll get our ramekins. I got some ready to go right here. Now we have got to spray these bad boys. I am using a spray that is specific for baking, so it has um, a little bit of flour in there. It's really important because we're going to invert these bad boys, right? And we're going to put them on a plate, and we want to make sure they come out clean. So I'm going to spray them. And the flour is, like, integral in that, like, process. Boop. There we go. There Morgan we go. said, don't kill me, but can you cook this meat well done? And yes, absolutely. Morgan. I'm going to put a piece of garlic in there, bro. It's your steaks. Crush it. Yeah. Smash it. Like that. Ugh. Let the juices Ugh. out. Smash the garlic clove. Okay. So here we go. Y'all ready? We're going to do this. It smells really good. I'm having a hard time focusing on the chocolate lava cake because all I can smell is steak right now. All right. Scrape this guy in here. Can y'all see that? So I'm all the chocolate, we tempered. Little... Everything's room temperature. Yep, Everything everything's is melding room temperature. a little nicer. 
All right, so just like brownies, we, we don't want to overmix mix this. We don't need to incorporate too much air into it. We just need to mix everything together. Look how so good. So good. Oh, can you smell that rosemary? I threw a piece of rosemary. I can't. I'm, I'm, I'm into all of it. Everything, okay. everything that you've done. Did you already spray your ramekin, Chef? I did. Did you miss that? We I did. I was. Uh, we, got a, we got a spray that's got some flour in it, so it, you know, helps those guys come sticking. out. This is perfect. Are you all ready? Here we go. All right. Ooh. Scrape down my bowl a little bit more. All right. Here we go. I'm going to use the anticipation my is favorite tool. The scooper. The scooper. Ooh. So good. Uh, let me catch you up yeah. if you're just joining us. If you just joined us, uh, we are right. right in the middle of making chocolate lava cakes. We've got steaks that's going to have a port cocoa demi glace that go. are that's working. We have our devils on horseback, not our devils on horseback. Our pigs on figs that are already out. They've baked. They're really simple. And we got our dressing, the cocoa balls. So, yeah. All right. So I do about a three quarter fill. Don't worry if it's messy because. You're going to invert it, right? Because we're going to invert it. It's not, we're not going to serve it in that guy anyway. Let's just get the last bit of this in there. If that one's more than three quarters full, can you please, that one's mine. Okay, that one's yours. All right. Now, we're going to throw these guys into the oven. We're going to do 450. All right, what do you want your timer, Chef? I need 12 minutes on the 12 clock, minutes. Chef. 12 minutes. Okay, so again, remember what I said, like, if you overcook it, ice cream on top, gooey brownie sundae. If you undercook it, lava cake, ice cream, ooey gooey sundae, That's you right. can't really go wrong. Um, but what we're going to look for is um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to rise almost like a souffle, right? So you'll get some, levi uh, some leavening there. But it'll have like a gooey center, like a tender soft center, right? Like a cake that's not quite done. All I right? Like 12 minutes. You 12 ready? Minutes. As soon as it goes right. in, I'm starting the timer, Chef. Okay. Throw those in. All right. Timer's on. My steaks. Minutes. All right. So you see the garlic and the rosemary that we put in there? My spoon. All right. Let's see. I don't have too – there's not too much fat in here, so I can't baste too much. But We had a question from YT on YouTube. Watching on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching YT on YouTube. Hey, you, you asked the question. You asked the question. How do I make a more tender steak? Mine are always tough. Um, could be YT, the, the, uh, the cut of meat you're using. Some cuts of meat just cook up a little tougher. Um, I promise you, if you cook a beef tenderloin, you're definitely going to get a much more tender like cut of meat. Even if you overcook it, I think, Morgan, if you, if you like yours real well done, it's just a tender cut of meat. So sometimes it tends, it tends to be just kind of the meat you're cooking. Um, other ways to do it is just don't overcook it. Some cuts of meat prefer to be cooked a little more, like I would say, medium, medium rare. Um, like the picanha prefers, like if you overcook it, it gets real tough. So I think it just depends on the kind of cut of meat that you're looking for. And if you live near an HEB, go talk to your meat market partner because they'll tell you exactly what cut of meat for the exact way you like to cook. If you like to do grill, if you like it real rare, if you like it real well done, they'll go, you know what? Best cut of meat for you may be X. Does that help YT? Or did I just confuse the issue? I'm known to confuse All the right. issue a little bit. No, I thought that was actually very useful information. All right. I'm going to let these guys sit here. We're going to let these rest for you about 10 rest? minutes. Yep. And while that's happening, we are going to finish up our sauce. Chef, so, your lava cakes have 10 minutes and 30 seconds, Chef. Okay. So we are at um, medium, medium high heat. Um, what I'm going to do now is I am going to deglaze my pans. We got all those good brown bits and stuff there. All right. Hang on, there. Chef. Hang on. We gotta, I gotta, you're about to do something that's very, very sexy for Valentine's Day. Okay. We're about to take the leftover bits oh, in a wait. pan and make a pan sauce. This is like one of those things. Take us through it nice and slow. Okay. Pan sauce 101. We're going to make a pan the sauce fun. 101. So we've got all these delicious bits in the bottom, right? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to deglaze the pan. I'm going to lift all that, those brown bits, the fond, off, add some flavor. Look at that. I am using um, port, and I'm actually just using um, like a port I got at um, – at, at HEB, H -E -B. in our wine department. Um, it's not a super high-end port. It's great for cooking, but it also has a really good flavor. There's a couple that are from Texas. Messina Hoff does a really great port. It's a really reasonable price. Um, and what port is it? It's a fortified um, 
wine, right? Um, it has from Portugal, or, right? I believe. What is the alcohol content of this one? It's fair, it's a little higher than regular it, yeah, wine, it's been but fortified. it's fortified. Um, but port goes really well with chocolate. Chocolate. So typically, Cocoa, you'd find port um, with like served with dessert, right? And then like sometimes when you go to like wonderful restaurants, they'll be like. We have a list of all of these wonderful ports. This one is a tawny. This one is a, and that's the only thing I really know. Usually they do it at dessert, right? It's like dessert yeah. kind of like to a company. All right, so we are going to, we got that. I've turned my stove off on accident, okay? The joke is it's either surface of the sun or off. We're going to let that simmer. So it's not a rolling boil. Nothing is on fire. Just a nice little simmer. And now we're going to add in our better than or more than gourmet. Demi looks like this. I'll show you. Ta da! Boop! Just like this. Love it. Here it is. Take this guy. And we're going to dissolve that in there. Let me get a whisk. I'm going to get a whisk. They make fun of my little whisk. I love this whisk. Barbie's first whisk. Look, I like. That whisk. I like a little whisk for certain jobs, and I think it's yeah. perfect for that pan, you know? I, I'm a fan of this one. All right. I'm going to just move this around, dissolve it. I'll throw another piece of rosemary in there. I really like the rosemary. Um, we're leaving it in whole. We're going to strain this sauce. I don't typically like, I don't like to eat rosemary. I feel like it's eating like, you're eating a stick. But I love the, the like, aroma and, like, essence of rosemary. So I'll I do leave too. that in there, right? Okay. And that's the whole thing with a pan sauce is you're really like we're just layering some flavors, right? We, we deglaze the pan, all the fawn from the yep. meat, all that great flavor, the garlic in there, the rosemary. We're going to add the butter. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, this is happening. Oh, 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 oh. What okay, happened? Run what away. happened? I'm going to get our greens. So I've got some mixed greens right here. A little bit of... Some feta cheese, so in here some mixed greens, washed greens. You know, you can keep a little paper towel over them to keep them um, crispy. Nice and crispy. Nice wet towel, um, too, in your fridge will keep them a little right? more green. I am going to add in our vinaigrette now, all right? And what You'll I'm notice she still has the same borosilicate bowl. Oh, we have so many of these. Look at this. Y'all literally were pouring chocolate on <laughs> salad. Stop. It's healthy. It's green. Mm. <laughs> it's, healthy. it's healthy. Is it healthy? It's green. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's healthy. We have to have our dietitians come in here to give us the, <laughs> the rundown on our. Oh, oh, okay, over there. All right, so now I'm gonna put on some gloves. Look, there's there's the heart healthy, and then there's heart, then there's happy, heart happy, right? Happy. And for Valentine's Day, just stick with heart just, happy. Yes, I just I gotta get my my little container right here. Okay, or my. So um, I like to mix my greens in a separate bowl. Um, so the you know the vinaigrette here is it's really heavy and it's really dark, and I like. For presentation purposes, I like to mix my greens first. Get them nice and lightly coated. Lightly coated. And be careful um, with the greens because they will wilt a little bit, right? So you want to be gentle with they it. They are delicate. They are delicate. Let's get this guy right here. They are very delicate. You could also use a hardier green if you wanted to. You could probably use, like, some baby romaine or... I don't know. What else do you think would be good, Tompkins? Um, I like arugula, to be honest. Ooh. I'm a big fan of arugula. I like arugula a little more hearty. Chef, can you use almond flour in your lava cake instead of uh, white, just all-purpose flour? Can you can you do that? I'm going to say yes. Yes, you can. Just got to um, figure out the proportions, you right? You got to figure out the proportions. So it's going to be more like a, Texture might like be a, little a different fudgy too. guy, but I, I don't see why not. I'm going to throw in some strawberries because strawberries and chocolate are a match made in heaven. And guess what, um, Charlotte? Those strawberries are from Poteet, Texas. These are, Those are the Texas, Texas roots. roots. Poteet. I'm putting Parmesan. No feta, right? That looks really good. And then um, I had some leftover bacon, y'all. So I'm going to put that on here as well because bacon. Okay, because bacon. Because who says you can't have your cake and eat it too? All right. So there is our salad. I love this guy. Beautiful. Put this guy here. There's your. We got our appetizer. Move we got our salad. That. The coca vinaigrette. All right, I'm coming back over to. Chef, my you got sauce. four and a half minutes on your uh, lava cakes. I got how many minutes? Four and a half. I'm four all half? over. I'm all okay. over this for you. You are. All right. Okay, I'm feeling good about this. I like where we are from a thickness perspective. It smells I'm, really I'm good. I'm gonna grab a little bit of water just in case. 
I think we're good. So now I'm going to add in our chocolate. I'm taking it off the heat. And I'm going to swirl in some chocolate. And I'm going to add in some cold butter. Look how glossy. Look this. at that. This is about to get so glossy, y'all. Y'all, it's about it's to get turn full gloss. To there it is. I'm gonna, it's going to literally turn into velvet right before your eyes. So this is like, this is how we do it in the restaurant. Butter melts away into the sauce. Look how glossy it got. Kind of that, that noise is kind of grating, but yeah. Then we're just going to make sure all that chocolate melts in there. Oh. I want to get a spatula so you can see, so y'all can feel like, look at this. Do you see this? A little chocolate in there. Oh. Divine. I love this. All right. It smells good. It looks it glossy. Smell it's good. beautiful. I got a bowl over here. I think for the students that watch these classes, we should have a list. We should have a set of, here's your Barbies first, and then we have the other tools so that people can, as you graduate to bigger yeah. things, you can have like a whole, that's just my thought. I'm looking at your you know, sauce. Here we go. Beautiful. Look how silky that is. What is um, our, our technical term where Montalbur? Montalbur. Yeah, mounting Mount our sauce. butter. Look at this. That's what gives sauces. You know, when you go to a nice restaurant, you see the sauce. It's real glossy. It's real sheen. For a sauce like this, all you want it to be able to do is just coat the back of a spoon. Yeah, and I we nailed it. You did. Okay. Nailed Perfect. it. Perfect. Get all that good sauce in there. All right. Set this aside. Y'all, we got so many things going. I'm so excited about this. Two and a half minutes, Chef. Okay, two and a half minutes. Before your lava cakes are ready. Okay. All right. I got a clean towel right here. So to catch everybody up, you've been watching the uh, four course. Uh, it's all about chocolate. It's our Valentine's Day class. It's fantastic. We are we are coming uh, to the to the finale. We got our steaks. We're about to plate up our steaks. If you miss something, you can always go back check out the Beautiful. recipes. You can always watch these classes. Don't fear if you got here late. No big deal. Welcome wherever wherever part you're jumping in at. No big deal. You can always watch this again at our YouTube channel. Simply so go to YouTube.com/slash/htb to check it all out. Don't forget everything you're watching Charlotte use. We're on Facebook, live right. on Facebook, shoppable on Facebook. All right, sauce it, Chef. Saucing. Okay, so I'm going to put our beautiful chocolate sauce. It's like, it's like velvet. Silky. Oh. Chocolate velvet, velvet chocolate. Could somebody, is that a band? Do we need to start a band? Velvet it's chocolate. actually my band. I've, I've oh. gone ahead and patented that because right. I feel like that's, if I had a band. Okay, and I'm not should we slice talented. the steaks, guys? I mean, like, what do y'all, y'all want to see what it looks like on the inside? Yeah, of see course. See if I got a really good, like, Tompkins medium. All right. Now, if you are going to like, if you, when you do sauce a steak or when you are putting sauce on a plate and you're going to put a steak on it, um, put the sauce on the bottom because we don't want to cover up the beautiful like steak. Um, if you screw it up, put the sauce on top and nobody will ever know. Especially right? a sauce like that underneath So is let's good. see. Okay. Got this guy here. We were talking about my band and I really am serious. I'm not musically talented, but I want to start, I want to have right. that name. So if anybody wants. Your medium, homie. It's perfect. How do you like that? I'll take it. Okay. Morgan says, no, it's dripping. Just five more minutes cooking time. You got it, Morgan. We'll put yours you back in it. there. Put yours back in. All about it. It's however okay. you want to eat your steak is what's right for you. It's right. What's right There's no for wrong you. way. All right. You want to cut this one too? Should we cut this one too? You can cut them both. Okay. Ooh, uh, la Morgan, la. we're going to do, I'll do you one better. Uh, this Charlotte's going like to drop off a steak to you. Butter. Oh, y'all, I'm so happy right now. It is beautiful. I'm it telling you the beautiful. tenderloin. You're Charlie, beautiful. you don't mind dropping off a steak to Morgan, right? No, I'm Let's on go my way. House. She's uh, on my way. right after this. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Should we put Perfect. more sauce on it? Yeah. I'm just going to leave it like that. You know what? I like, I like it just underneath. I can just kind of drag yes. the pieces through. Oh, my God. All right, Chef. Your timer's okay. off for your... Uh, is it? Did it go off? It, uh, it went off. It just okay. went off. 12 minutes. I didn't hear any of like obnoxious beeping, so. Eh, eh, eh. Is that better? Okay. I can do yes. the. Uh, it's on silent because you know we got to be quiet. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. Let me get let me um, let me get ready for these cakes. Let me do a little cleanup here. Okay. You got time. Perfect steaks. Okay. Ready to go. Ah, look, Valentine's look, Day. They like puffed up. Can y'all see them? I can't, but you maybe. You got that little like. <laughs> you can't see that. Show us, show us. Okay. We're all waiting. Oh, okay. Look at this. Right, They're go. like little, um, 
12 minutes later. They're like little souffles. I'm going to put a towel down. We're going to let them sit for like just like a couple of seconds. Look, see they're kind of jiggly. Oh, okay. yeah. My oven is so, so hot. Um, oh, look. It may be good to okay. rotate your pans. Okay. Every oven's All a little right. bit different. Rotate yes. them so they get yes. evenly cooked. Okay. Those look beautiful. Right. Let me get, I got to get something from the refrigerator. I know. Those are perfect. They're going to rest. How much? My friend likes. Look at that teddy bear. Wait, hold on. Stand by. Stand by. Where's are you getting me whipped cream? There? Here it is. That's right. The can. Yeah, so on mine, Chef, what I want is at least a seven to eight inch mound of whipped cream. Yes, we talked about on this. Top I of know. The, I just want to make sure we okay. all know that. Morgan does too. She wants okay. at least, Here she wants go. 10 to 12 inches on hers. I want a big, careful, those are hot, Chef. Hot. Okay, y'all be careful when y'all do this, please. All right. I'm six ounce ramekins, guy. Pino. Six ounce. That's what she's using, a six ounce ramekin there. All right, it was very, very important. So you're putting that, so you put the plate on the bottom, you invert it. Yep. Let it sit for a second. What, y'all want to do this guy right here? Whichever one you want, Chef. Okay. We are in your delicate hand, Chef. All right, flip this guy over. I'm going to move this out of the way. Do you want me to come spray mine with whipped cream? Because uh, I want to make you sure I, mean, I trust like you. You could do a lava bar, and everybody could do their own thing. I am going to be measuring. Okay. Right. Here we go. Drum roll, please. Did we spray it right? The big reveal. It's so slippery. Stand by. Stand by. Here we go. It's slippery and also okay. it's hot. Ooh. 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 There we go. Is it starting to spread out? Ooh, mama. There's that one. Okay. Oh, I see a little. I see a little of that lava. It's doing its little thing. The volcano. Ooh. Boom. Look at that. That one's lavaing. We're going to put some whipped cream on the side. I got some straw babies to put on here. Morgan, those aren't ours. You have to at least double that height. So those are, she'll, she'll make ours in a second. Like that? that was I got you, Morgan. <laughs> I got you, friend. I knew we could peer pressure into it. There we it. go. Here's a little bit more. There we go. Thank cream. you. Piled high. Special occasion. Look how pretty. And then when you cut strawberries like this, they look like little hearts. Little heart. I'm so happy about it. Should we cut this one and see what it looks like on the inside? Yeah, I want to. Yeah, yeah, I, I need you to. Have the full, like, watch me eat on camera. It's like the thing I'm like, I'm not going to do it. See how it's like, it has that like jiggly, like that, like that right there? Like, nailed it, y'all. Who's one? No. Uh, while she eats that, uh, guys, don't forget, you can check out all the great content. Simply go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash h The past year of fantastic content. Cook along with us. All the and what's coming up tomorrow, more classes. Big game. Big Scott game. Scott Tompkins is going to make all of the best big game, um, big game. Uh, snacks and eats. We're going to do some good stuff. And next week, uh, you can slash classes and check out what you're making. What are you making? Soups? A very classic French coco vin coco in an vin. instant pot, and then a tomato basil soup, and then is you know better than a grilled cheese sandwich to go with a tomato with basil tomato soup. soup. So exactly, it's thank all about guys. simplicity. It's all easy, Chef. Thank you so much. This was I'm excited for found looks so home. Evening, Happy Valentine's Day.